Okay? We're going to go on and we're going to do the biological terrain. And I'll just give you a quick little intro. The biological terrain is what your body needs to grow healthy cells. Okay? Now, <clears throat> it's, it's consider, it the, consider it the soil of your body. I'll, I'll just do the first slide here because i got a little joke for you, and then, and then we'll take a little break. Um, we need to know, as, as people in, in, in medicine, are we truly getting sick people well at the core, or are we just moving symptoms around? And how do we measure this? How will we really know we're getting people well? So we have this thing called the biological terrain, which is all these different parameters. Okay, so it's a little like this. There, there was this Norwegian chicken farmer, and he, you know, consider the soil thing in the, in the biological terrain. So this Norwegian chicken farmer, he, he goes into the feed store, and he buys 100 baby chicks. Two weeks later, he comes back, buys another 100 baby chicks. And three weeks later, he comes back and he buys 300 baby chicks, little baby chicks. And the feed store guy says, man, what are you doing with all these baby chicks anyway? And the Norwegian chicken farmer, he's shuffling his feet, and he's going, you know, I'm doing something wrong. I'm either planting them too deep or too close together. <laughs> so, anyway, let's take a three-minute break, and then we'll go on to biological terrain. All right, gang, we're going we're gonna to get going again here, if that's okay. Um, the biological terrain. So the Norwegian chicken farmer never figured it out. <laughs> but that's his problem. The biological terrain consists of factors and conditions that are needed for proper cellular growth. Right? Think of this terrain like the nutrients existing in the soil, in your garden, which are vital for growing healthy plants. The effectiveness of our treatment depends on the quality of the biological terrain. That's what exists in your body. So we look at we look at the factors in your body, we look at the testing parameters, and the interpretation of the testing, right? And then finding the cause, That's because that's what we're trying to look at. Okay, so what are we really looking at and measuring? Now, now here's, there's... You know, we've been to seminar after seminar on this kind of thing, you know, with, re with respect to diagnostic coding, and um, there, are, there are volumes of diagnostic codes and tests that, um, you know, some of these medical companies, these diagnostic companies put out. And you can't imagine, you know, every office is scrambling, okay, what code is that? Okay, how do we code this out? Okay, blah, blah, blah. We talked about that before. But so... What, what we're going to look at today are some, some um, naturopathic principles and some biological principles and, and biological terrain principles that you may or may not have heard before. Or maybe you have, and maybe you guys should be up here talking, <laughs> which would be great. So, do we really test correctly? Okay. <laughs> Anybody have that problem? <laughs> Isn't that good? This is where we go to this place in um, Bethel community where we buy our raw milk from Nets, Nets Grocery. And I was looking at her, and she's got all these cool little cartoons. I said, Net, I need that. i got to have it. And Jan goes, well, I'll look it up. I'll get it off the Internet. And she did. I said, that is so cool. <laughs> so anyway, so some of the current medical myths we've started to address, cholesterol. How big of a deal is cholesterol? Man, we need cholesterol. We are cutting cholesterol levels way down. I just found out that my stepfather, his cholesterol level was 115. I go, Clayton, they're trying to kill you. I said, we got to get that up. I said, get off the statins, get that, you know, and he's got some heart issues. But and there's, well, whatever. Um, salt, there's another thing. Salt is, is your mineral base. This is why you, this is your, your basis for alkalinity. And for, and for your, your millivoltage in your cellular membrane, which we're going to look at, fluoride. Is fluoride really good for you? Does fluoride do anything? It models your teeth, causes cancer, screws up your thyroid, T4 to T3 conversion in the liver, but it really doesn't do anything. I'll tell you, uh, remember that biochemist I told you about, the guy that said we'll, we'll never have a macronutrient deficiency because of uh, Wonder Bread? Well, the same guy... And he was a brilliant biochemist, by the way. His name is Dr. Leon Singer. We, uh, I opted out of biochemistry lab um, 
when I was in first year in dental school because I'd majored in biochemistry. And um, we did, there was this substance called Durafat, which was from England, and it was a fluoride containing paint that you paint on teeth. And so we measured the, through iontophoresis, which is a kind of a technique, we measured the ion, fluoride ion migration across the enamel matrix. And a semester at that time at the University of Minnesota was nine months. So we painted, we, we took these extracted teeth from, from um, the oral surgical department, painted this Durafat on it, and measured the ion migration. Do you know how much fluoride ion migrated across the enamel matrix in nine months? None. So we go into the dental office and we have a one minute gel. Hallelujah. So how much, if it doesn't migrate at all in nine months, how much is going to migrate in one minute? And then the kids, the kids have died from this stuff. They've died from eating toothpaste. So it, it is a, now, uh, Derek, I don't know if Derek's here yet. Uh, my friend Derek texted me just a month ago and he says, Tom, the, the very prestigious medical journal, The Lancet, has just declared fluoride an excitoneurotoxin. <clears throat> and we're still using it in dentistry. Plus a bunch of other junk. But uh, low fat. There's the biggest, biggest myth of all, in my opinion. I mean, it's not about low fat. We need healthy fats. We need healthy fats in a huge way. Because what's happening is we're ending up with plastic cellular membranes that don't transmit anything. They screw up ion channels and whatnot. GMO. Okay, you, you guys, you guys are, you all know about this stuff. The fluoride's on there twice. Insurance. <laughs> Do, you know, is my, whatever. Pharmaceuticals. Okay, now pharmaceuticals, they, they can't make, they can't patent natural medicines. They, they cannot do it. But they can try and buy out, you know, uh, companies that, that make them. Acid blockers, here's a huge one. You know, you got Larry the Cable Guy going, well, don't get heartburn in the first place. You know, and it's like, come on, Larry. You know, it's not, it's, it's mostly about hypochlorhydria, okay, not hyperchlorhydria, which means too much hydrochloric acid. As we age in the gut, the acid level drops, and that screws up a whole lot of things, and we're going to be, and, and I know uh, Danny's going to address some of that too. Um, so we've got that one wrong. You, you, mostly you probably need more acid than less acid. Healthcare? Is it healthcare or is it disease care? So what constitutes the biological terrain? I'm going to speed it up here a little bit because I've got another oral inflammatory thing to go through and I want to get there and then we'll take a 20-minute break. Blood, saliva, pH, voltage, nutrients, oxygenation, acidity, alkalinity, water, redox potential, electrolytes, minerals, intracellular fluid, extracellular fluid. That's where your voltage is. Probiotics, lymph tissue, et cetera, et cetera. And I already told you about the Norwegian chicken farmer. Okay, the physical properties of water. Water is a huge deal, folks. And now I, I'm going to encourage you right now, everybody, I want everybody in this room to stop by and visit Buzz, okay? And I challenge anyone. In fact, they're, <laughs> he's holding up the bottle, but it's not what you think, okay? Uh, maybe tonight it will be, I don't know. But no, it's for, for right now it's alkaline water. Okay, so the physics of water. Water, water is, is just, you know, one of the things I think the Lord did is he did, he did two things that amazed me. First of all, he created a medium whereby only, where all life exists. What do we do when we go to Mars? What do we do when we look at planetary? Th we, the first thing we want to know, is there water? Well, why is that? It's because you need water for life. Okay, so water exists in three states, gas, liquid, and solid. No physicist can explain this. Water is a concept connected to life as referred to in the scriptures. Water has voltage, except for distilled water. If you use distilled water, it has no voltage. So don't use distilled water. If you do, oh, wait a minute, let me, let me rephrase that. If you use distilled water, put concentrate minerals back in it. Okay. Water, this, this, I've, this is amazing to me. Water expands when it gets colder. You know, in Minnesota, we'd play hockey on the ice, and we'd skate and stuff. And in the wintertime, as the ice was forming, you'd hear this, 
just these big cracks going down down the lake. And I'm going, what's going on? And the ice would heave and buckle because it was expanding. And I always thought, wait a minute. I thought when things were frozen, they, they contracted. I thought the molecules got closer together, the atoms got closer together, and things would contract. Well, water behaves in the exact opposite way. Water has the highest surface tension of all liquids. Um, I don't have time to go into this, but one guy explained to me how Jesus walked on water and had to do with the surface tension. It was pretty cool. Water betrays gravity by rising against gravity in the tree, tr trunks of trees. We, in Minnesota, we, we, we just laid down a brand new asphalt driveway, which was four inches thick. I came out a couple months later, and dandelions are growing through the asphalt. I'm like, what? So I called the guy. And he goes, yeah, well, that happens. And I said, how does that happen? He didn't know. He didn't have a clue. And it has to do with the specific gravity of water, water betraying gravity by, by actually being forced through and up, and it can rise up into trees. And this defies, uh, no physicist can, can understand, they don't understand this. Uh, what happened here? Okay. Water, okay, water is structured. Okay? This is huge. This is why homeopathy works the way it does. Water has memory. Okay? This is, this is an amazing concept. It imprints the energetic pattern of whatever is in the water or next to the water, such as in a plastic water bottle. So, you get, you, you, so here's the thing. You, you gotta, you're drinking water out of a plastic phthalate water bottle that's been heated in the sun on some pallet somewhere in a grocery store, you know, out back. And you're, you're, you're really just drinking phthalate. These are, these are xenoestrogens that are, that are messing up you know, your, your, receptor, your estrogenic receptor sites. That's what happens. So would you rather have water from Buzz back there that's pure alkaline water or drink it out of the Boston Harbor? Have you ever seen fish that come out of the Boston Harbor? They have three eyes. They've got fins growing places they should. It's amazing. And it's like, really? So... This is the essence of homeopathy. Water imprints energetically whatever is next to the water. Okay, and you guys have probably seen all the research on this, where people speak, you know, words into water. And and, and um, when I was uh, at an A4M convention, I was I visited this guy. His name was Oleg Oleg Yuskov, and he gave me this tape on on uh, on. He was just this big. You know, guy said, I'll, I'll arm wrestle you for that water. And he says, yeah, well, whatever. So, but he gave me this tape. He gave me a DVD tape on, on research that had been done by the Russians after their cosmonauts came back from a space flight, a three-month space flight, and they had aged like 30 years. And he says, we knew it was the water, and, and so all these researchers went set out to figure out why. It's a three-hour tape, and, and it, it was amazing. So I kind of wrote, I, 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 I um, wrote an article on it, and I gave it back to him, and I haven't talked to him since, but uh, I, asked, I asked Sinatra about this, and he said, I said, is this true? And he goes, oh, yeah. He says, I have a name for it. I call it electroceuticals. And so then I walked into the seminar, and he, he says, the topic today is electroceuticals. And I go, electroceuticals, okay. That was a new one on me. But it can record and store information. The molecular structure of water is like the alphabet. It has a molecularly coded structure. And ionic water has smaller memory molecules, and that's, that's what makes it more hydrated. Buzz can tell you all about this. Buzz told me, he said, you, you send anybody up against me, and I'll... I'll Tell them, tell them the truth. So I'm, I'm believing them. So you're 70% water. In your brain, your brain bioplasm is 85% water. So this might be a good place to start if we want to talk about health, right? Water needs to be alkaline, 7.5 to 9.0 pH. Now your blood does a, a, an amazing job of buffering your blood in a 7.35 to 7.45 range. And, and we're going to get into voltage. And this becomes a huge phenomenon. Water needs to, okay. Water needs minerals or electrolytes in order to hold a charge. Distilled water does not conduct electricity. When minerals are added to water in the form of ions, it conducts electricity very well. The more minerals in the water, the better the conductor. 
Water needs to be ionized. This gives it smaller crystalline structures called memory cells, and that's the essence right there. This makes it more hydrated. Water must be free of contaminants. It has memory, it records and remembers or it imprints. That's the magnetic imprint. That's the homeopathic signature. Okay? And Marnie's going to talk about this, right? So Marnie's the guru on that. So any direct uh, any questions on that, you know, talk to Marnie. So water has memory, it records and remembers or implants the magnetic energy patterns of substances that are in the water. You see, we don't understand this in Western medicine. So what do we do? We just say, nah, that's that's bunk. But it's not. This is the very essence of homeopathy. Without water, there is no life. So what gives us the ability to determine the success or failure of our treatment regimens? How do we know we're on the right track? We have to test, right? So what do we do that? We do a CBC panel, and we do um, some blood work, and we say everything's normal, and you're okay. Yeah, but doc, I got all these symptoms. Well, yeah, but your labs say you're, you're fine. You're normal. Maybe something's a little, little high, a little low. Um, Jerry Tennant, who's an ophthalmologist, who's written a book called Healing is Voltage, which you guys have to read this book. It's called Healing is Voltage. And he says, physicians are great at looking at things that are too high. If, you know, if your blood sugar's too high, if your cholesterol's too high. But he says, we're not tuned to looking at things that are too low. Like, like, what if you know? What does that mean? You know, when your when your inflammatory markers are too low, you know, it means you're in a chronic attack. Um, when your blood sugar is too low, unless you're, unless you're you know going into a diabetic coma, then we pay attention to it. But he says we're we're trained you know explicitly to look at high levels and not low levels. So in integrative testing, we look at inflammatory markers. Now again, neuroscience has done amazing work on this. Uh, we can talk about candida testing, can, uh, candida testing, or candidiasis. Um, I believe that most people have some form of candidiasis that, that's the inflammatory component. Gut permeability testing, how big of a deal is that? That's called leaky gut syndrome. Okay, and again, Danny's going to address this, and I've got some stuff that we'll talk about too. But this is huge. This is what's causing a lot of the reactivity to your foods. Okay, and it's because of the, we've changed the protein content through genetic modification. And so your, your immune system says, we don't recognize this, so it, it begins to attack it. Questionnaires, that's another way to do it. Absorption and digestive capacity, comprehensive digestive stool analysis. How many, you know, I mean, with, with um, gut issues, I mean, so many people have gut. That's the number one cause. That's the number one reason to go to physicians is gas and bloating. Mineral testing. Um, Spectrox, Spectracell does a really good job on this. CBC panels and serum analysis interpretation. Like I said, we, you know, we do extensive um, panels, but they don't sometimes really yield a lot. Uh, if, if you're doing uh, MCV, if any of you have methylation issues, MCV, mean corpuscular volume, if that's high, you're, you've got some vitamin, vitamin B12 and you've got some methylating issues. You need to be on folate. Okay, if it's above, uh, maybe Danny can address this, um, or, or Dr. Uh, Phil can address this. But if, you're, if your levels are above 99, you, you've got some methylation issues going on. And anemia is too. But blood detective analysis, salivary hormone analysis, this has become very popular. Some physicians don't embrace this, but we do. So salivary hormone analysis is the, is the intracellular filtrate. Okay, it's the intracellular. It's where the action is. It's where your hormones are actually doing their work, not in the blood. When you test them in the blood, you're testing. Uh, the blood is a transport medium. Okay, and they're bound to, to hormones called sex hormone binding globulin, thyroid binding globulin. So when you're measuring a blood level of a hormone, you really don't know what's bioavailable. And I know Dr. Phil's going to address that. Urinary filtrate analysis. That's your, that's your extracellular fluid, okay? That's the measure of your extracellular fluid. That, that's like, um, that's the metabolites, okay? That's like, uh, if you want to know where your, where your money went, you go to your checkbook ledger. Doing a urinary filtrate analysis is like doing, is like 
figuring out where where the things where your uh, hormones and and uh, whatever you're testing has been metabolized, how it's been metabolized, and HbA1c. So some integrative specialty testing, uh, GTI, GTT plus insulin. It's great for glucose testing, gastrointestinal dysbiosis analysis. CDSA. These are very comprehensive tests, and you need to specifically ask. And will they be covered by insurance? Probably not. But again, do you want to get well, or do you want to do you want to find out what's really going on? The testing has come a long ways, folks. It really has. You mean know genomic testing? Again, neuroscience is doing this. And Randy, we should get you up here and have you do a little spiel on that. Um, neurotransmitter testing again. Um, Neuroscience is fantastic. They do a sleep adrenal panel. So for any of, the, any of you who are having trouble sleeping, you need to get it's it's not just about melatonin, okay? It's about what your what your neurotransmitters are doing at what time of the day and what time of the night. There's a guy that I've talked to, his name is Scott Thurl. He's a he's a neurochemical DC and he's brilliant. And he and he can read these tests and and I'll call him up and say, hey, I got a patient here and I'm not really getting you know, what this test is. So and he'll walk me through it. And so the beauty of this whole thing that we're doing here, you guys, is is uh, we're connecting with people who know what's going on and, and and who who are really gurus in the integrative world. So that gives us great satisfaction that we can actually kind of get you a, an answer. Okay. Serum compatibility testing, this is something we do in dentistry, okay? So for those people that have, uh, you're worried about your dental fillings, you're, you're worried about dental components that we use in your mouth, that's what serum compatibility testing is. Heavy metal testing, that's a huge deal. Oxidative stress testing, food allergy testing, ALCAT testing, neuroscience does that too, right? Okay. The purpose of the blood is to maintain the proper blood pH. There it is, right there. It carries and transports nutrients. It removes waste products. It carries the hemoglobin for the oxygen binding. Hemoglobin, by the way, is pH dependent. Maintaining the Bohr curve and the acid alkaline shift. Maintaining a specific enzyme system known as the carbonic anhydrase system, which has to do with alkalinity, acidity. It, it's, this is a very con tightly controlled situation. If you get out of that range, your pH, you die. Okay, that is your body does you, your body will fight to its death to maintain that blood pH. It'll do everything it can with acidity. It'll, it'll take calcium out of your bones, out of your teeth, in order to make sure that that blood pH stays where it's where it's at. This is an enzyme system that is zinc dependent, cofactor, and pH dependent. This system is very important to maintain a buffering capacity of the blood to keep blood alkalinity constant. That's its job. Salivary filter. Okay, I'm going to step it up here a little bit. This contains uh, the enzyme amylase. The content of saliva is a very good representation of the lymphatic system and your digestive capability. By examining saliva, we can also see what's going on with the oxidative stress in the lymphatic system. Saliva pr provides lubrication and adjusting the pH, it adjusts the pH in the mouth. It tells us about the lymph tissue, the small intestine, and the pancreatic activity, plus what's happening in the mouth. Urinary filtrate. The analogy here is a little like your checkbook ledger. When you want to see where your money is going, you look at your checkbook ledger. We already said that. If your urine is not yellow, you are vitamin B deficient. Okay? Why? Because you don't have enough butyrate in your, in your lower bowel. Butyrate is a short-chain fatty acid. <clears throat> that, that's where your vitamins are. That's where B vitamins and vitamin K2 are produced. And we almost lost a baby because of that. <clears throat> the little one I showed you with the cow uniform. <laughs> So that was that was quite a day. When you want to see what your body has metabolized, you look at the urinary metabolites to see what's been spent. What is filtered through the kidneys is actually a blood filtrate we call the urinary filtrate. So they, they measure urinary tests measure urinary metabolites. Here's the structure of the cell. Okay? An amazing thing. Made up, uh, your body's made up of trillions of these. I hear 10 trillion, a trillion, 30 trillion, 100 trillion. I don't really know, folks. I mean, it, it's trillions, okay? But the bacteria, but it, it doesn't even come near trumping the bacterial microbiome in your gut, which is over 100 trillion bacteria that are actually very beneficial. And when the, and those get out of whack, we call that digestive dysbiosis. 
Okay, so the cell, what I want to focus on here is the cell membrane in the lower right corner there. Cellular membrane integrity, the gateway to the cell. This is the brain of the cell. It's the border patrol. Is it legal or is it foreign? Functions of the membrane, it stores electrons. It's the guardian of the cell. Okay, now it used to be said that the DNA or the uh, nucleus is the brain of the cell, but it has to get there first. So this is the gateway to the cell. Um, it controls what enters and exits the cell. It has to do with depolarization, especially in nerve cells, sodium and potassium influx. Okay, so there it is. It's the gateway. It's a bipolar screen, cellular screen door. That's what it is. The cell membrane is the brain of the cell or the gateway into the cell. It actually acts as a capacitor. Now, this is, uh, this is some of uh, a tenant's work. It's a capacitor that stores voltage for the cell to use. Now we're going to, this is uh, some amazing stuff here. It reacts to the environment through redox signaling molecules. Redox, you hear about redox potential? The body has a, when, when the body has to know what's going on in the cell, it has a, a series of, of uh, um, chemical reactions that, and chemical signal or molecules, uh, signaling molecules that signal distress. These are called redox signaling molecules. And they're sent out, they're made in the, in some, mostly in the mitochondria. And, but they're, they're sent out and they tell, they relay back to the, nu the, the DNA in the nucleus that there's something wrong. And then they, then they start building all these, they set the genetic machinery into, into play. Um, they, they begin producing proteins with messenger RNA and they, they produce oxidants and antioxidants. And, DNA transcription switches and all this kind of stuff that, that turns on all the genetic machinery. It's a very complicated thing. There's a guy named Gary Samuelson who's done a lot of work on this, and he's, he's done brilliant work, and I'll share some of that with you. But it is made of a bipolar lipid membrane. Now, this is the other thing I said. The, the, the two things that amaze me about what the Lord's done is the water. The other thing is the cellular membrane, uh, and I've got to share this with you. Um, Dr. Tennant, was, uh, he's an ophthalmologist. He's a surgical ophthalmologist. And he was sick for seven years and didn't know why. He, he was on his deathbed for seven years. He, so he set out to fix a cell. He says, I'm going to try to understand how I fix a cell because all my cells are the same and all the membranes are the same. Every cell in your body has a similar bipolar lipid matrix membrane, okay, which is what we're talking about here. And he said, if I can figure out how to fix one cell, I can fix all my cells. And he did. He, he figured it out. So it is made of a bipolar lipid membrane with a voltage charge of minus 20 millivolts to minus 25 millivolts. There it is. It's glycophospholipid membrane. Okay, now that's a big, long word. That means sugar, phosphorus, and fat. Okay, bipolar means it's, it, it's, it's well, it, it looks like an accord. It, I thought it looked like an ice cream sandwich, actually. <laughs> and it's got these little pores in it called ion channels, okay? And that's, and now ion channels can work. Okay, so this is the Border Patrol. Okay, I threw that in there. It operates very efficiently. It runs on a charge of minus 20 to minus 25 millivolts. Now, there's a cellular membrane resting potential of 90 millivolts. We're not going to get it. There's a lot of physics behind this stuff, and I don't want to have you guys glazing over. I just want you to understand some key concepts here. And one of them is the cellular membrane has to operate in an operating range of minus 20 millivolts to minus 25 millivolts. That coincidentally corresponds to a pH of 7.35 to 7.45 uh, potential of hydrogen. That's the blood chemistry, okay? It needs a constant supply of healthy essential fats to stay functional. So what are we doing today? We're eating all this trans fatty stuff and all this plastic lipid junk and all this sugary stuff and we're messing with our bipolar lipid membranes and we're ending up with plastic membranes. So so insulin is sent, uh, sugar you, you, you eat some sugar, insulin is sent to the cell, you got a plastic membrane, it says we don't recognize this because it, it, the receptors are screwed up. The receptors are like little email boxes, like little email hashtags. We'll get into that here in a minute. Okay, so there's a there's a little um little better view. 
Okay, so the integrity of the cellular membrane becomes, and, 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 the, and the millivolt potential becomes very, very important. The inner membrane in the mitochondria is where all the action is. That's where all the energy production is made. That's where your ATP is made. So but the thing is, DNA, mitochondrial DNA has no protection. And the inner membrane has no protection. So that's why it becomes the oxidation of energy exhaust. Whenever cells, when, whenever you have cellular energy production, you have oxidation. And that's, think of it as cellular energy exhaust. Okay? So we have to protect that. How do you do that? You, you protect that with antioxidants. Vitamin E, gamma delta vitamin E is a real good one. Okay? Uh, glutathione is a good one. So this is where the ATP made in, is made, and this is what your body runs on. Your body burns fat, doesn't burn glucose, except for some brain cells and some neuron cells. Fatty acids are shuttled across the membrane and then into the, of the mitochondria, burn in the oxidative cycle, and then shuttle back out. So your, your bipolar membrane has receptors on it. Okay. Now these little receptors, you've got receptors for everything, from vitamin D to testosterone to glutathione, you name it, chromium. And these are like, you've got mail, your receptor sites, okay? Boom, they want to get in. Um, they're like hashtags or email addresses for the cell. They're made of essential fatty acids. That's why essential fatty acids are such a big deal. Okay. So they also have ion channels, and these ion channels are where the nutrients go, get into the cell. They're, they're, they're like gated channels. Okay? They're, they're either active or passive. The active ones require energy or ATP production to move the molecule across the membrane. So when, you're taking, when, when you've got a heart issue and you're taking a calcium channel blocker, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about blocking the calcium channel. Okay? Now, faulty cell membrane, uh, Allergy Research Corp, which is one of these journals that I get a lot of, okay, um, will, um, they've, they've drawn a, a, a distinction between faulty cellular membrane ion channels and asthma. And so they've come out with this product called NT Factor, and I'm, I'm not here to bolster people's products, but this NT factor is a glycophospholipid nutrient substance that has all the essential nutrients that fixes cellular membranes. So getting back to Dr. Tennant's thing, if I can fix a cellular membrane and I have proper water, I can fix a lot of stuff. Okay? I can, I can reverse a lot of aging process. So here you have passive, there's active transport. Okay, it requires ATP. Diffusion across the membrane. Together with the microbiome, the integrity of the cellular membranes has been shown to be the cause of many dysfunctional states. Many. Asthma, eczema, IBS, even Lyme. Okay. So, um, and, and again, just to, just to end here on the, pro, on the uh, probiotic part of the biological terrain, this is where um, probiotics come from. So if you, if, you have, if you have a vaginal birth, you get a swipe of mostly bifido and lactobacillus, but it's mostly bifido, which, is, which, is, which re begins to populate the lower bowel. And that's why babies who um, have vitamin K deficiencies, you know, that's, that's why you need, that's, like I said, we almost lost Evelyn on that, because they didn't, they didn't give her the, the vitamin K shot. Because, but this is, this is what happens. If you do a vaginal delivery, you're getting... Lactobacillus and gut microbiomes. If you do a cesarean section, you're you're getting skin flora is basically what you're getting. Okay. So that's my uh, that's my Nashville, Tennessee thing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. So without having a, cell, a healthy cellular membrane, and that means a healthy biological terrain, you you can't have a healthy body. Okay. So, 10 minute break, 10 minute break. And then we're going to come on and we're going to talk about oral inflammation. Okay? To seven.